Hello, welcome to this first tutorial for the Feed Scroll Generator app for Autodesk Inventor. This is the app that allows you directly inside Autodesk Inventor to create beautifully smooth feed screw geometry for filling production lines. So we're going to, for this first tutorial, just create a simple shaft with no bottle rotation, a simple shaped bottle, and take a look at the basic features in the app. I'm going to start a new part inside Inventor 2022 here. The app, it supports all recent versions of Inventor actually back to 2014. So inside this new part, let's hit the Generate button, which should be on the 3D Model tab once you've installed the app. And the app will start building a starter shaft preview for us and give us a form where we can enter all of the desired values uh, specification for this shaft. We're really going to focus on these inputs that are not greyed out by default uh, for this uh, initial tutorial. So this will be the shaft size, bottle pitch and the distance of the bottle from the center of the shaft. You can see these other options are currently turned off by default, this variable distance of the bottle from the shaft axis, bottle rotation, oversizing the bottle to give a soft entry or soft exit. These are super simple options, but they're covered in later tutorials. So before we jump in and start changing numbers in here to make the shaft more the design that we actually want. Let's just quickly take a look at some help we can find within the form here. You see we've got these little eye symbols uh, against each of the inputs. We've taken a lot of time to uh, put some decent explanatory pictures here and some text to help you really get to grips with what the controls do nice and fast. So for instance, shaft rotation, you see here if I toggle between left and right hand uh, shaft rotation, the preview doesn't actually change. It does for most of the other controls here, but not for this one. So if we want to know, well, what's the shaft gonna look like if it's left hand versus right hand, we can hover over the eye symbol here and we can see quite clearly the direction of the helical cut that we'll get for right-handed and for left-handed there. So we'll leave it as left-handed, but you can see those eye symbols for all of the inputs, which should help you to get up to speed with the app nice and quickly. Okay, let's start designing a basic shaft here. To enter into any of these uh, inputs, all we've got to do is just type and hit enter on our keyboard or move into a different one, and you'll see the preview update. This is the uh, same for the diameter of the shaft here. And we can basically enter any values that we want in here. The app will only check that these are actually sensible once you hit go. Okay, and let's maybe make that a bit lower. Okay, and let's move down to the bottle pitch entry. Before we can enter our bottle pitch, we really need to know what size of bottle we're working with. So let's scroll down in the app form here and let's look at the two ways that we can describe the bottle shape. Uh, we can import a 3D solid, which is covered in a later tutorial, or we can sketch a 2D profile for the bottle if the bottle is a consistent, constant profile along its height. So let's hit this button here and this will open up a normal Inventor 2D sketch where we can make any changes to our bottle shape. So we can just go ahead and delete this circle. We're gonna create a more interesting rounded rectangle bottle shape here. What we need to do is make sure that we don't delete any of this, this uh, remaining geometry here, this origin point in the sketch, the center point for the bottle, or the dimension that links the two. These are all used by the app under the bonnet. We need to make sure we leave those untouched. So let's use the normal sketch tools to start sketching our rectangle. I've got to attach it to the center point there and let's make this maybe 40 millimeters tab 55. Enter, escape. And then I'm going to put rounded fillets on there. Let's make those 10 millimeters. The reason we need to put a fillet, it doesn't have to be a large fillet, it could be a fillet of 0.5 millimeters if you like, but we do need to make sure that all of the lines or curves or splines that are defining the bottle shape are all tangent to each other. We can't have any sharp edges, otherwise the app won't be able to calculate the geometry. 
If you're not sure whether your lines and arcs and splines are all actually tangent to each other, it's pretty obvious they are in this case because I just added fillets, but if you're not sure, one method is to select all the geometry and you can use this tool down here in Inventor to show or hide all constraints. And you can see these tangent constraints here very clearly if you do have tangency between um, arcs and lines for instance. Sometimes it's possible to think that you do have tangency when in fact you don't. So this is all tangent, I've got my shape defined. I need to check that the sketch is fully constrained. If I failed to snap the center of the bottle to this bottle center point here that was already in the sketch, then the app won't be able to control the movement of the bottle correctly but my sketch is fully constrained, so I'm all good to go. I'm just gonna hit finish sketch as usual, and then the app will restart, and this time you show me a preview of the rounded rectangle bottle shape that I've got. Okay, let's make some more changes now. Now that we've got the, uh, let's just make the shaft a bit shorter. Now that we've got the actual bottle shape, it's gonna be easier to define the bottle pitch. I know that the bottle is 55 millimeters in width in this case, so I'm going to put 55 here. I'm not gonna allow a clearance at the start. You can actually check out one of our later tutorials for how we can provide a sort of artificial clearance or oversize to the bottles. But in this case, I just want the bottles to be touching at the start of the shaft. You can see that they're not yet. And we'll come to why this is in a, in a moment. But that's my start pitch of 55, which should be the same as the bottle width. My end pitch for the bottles, which is how far I want them to be apart when they're exiting the shaft, I want that to be, let's say, 40 millimeters more. So I'll make that 95. Okay, now why are these bottles not touching at the start? I set my pitch to be exactly the same width as the bottles. Well, that's because of the start lead-in value that I've got, it's too low. Let's take a look at the information icon here to see what this start lead-in value does. This value determines how long the pitch will stay at 55 in this case after the start of the shaft. So we're only maintaining our pitch of 55 millimeters for five millimeters. Um, at the start of the shaft and then it's instant well then it's gradually transitioning to the end pitch of 95 so by the time it gets here this is more than five millimeters along the shaft the pitch is no longer 55 the pitch is probably 60 or something like that or 56 or 57 the transition will always be smooth between the start pitch and the end pitch that's controlled by a nice smooth curve in a sketch in inventor but this looks a bit misleading for us, doesn't it? We're expecting those two bottles to be touching at the start. So if we were to set this start lead-in value to 55 and say, don't start changing the pitch up to 95 until we're exactly 55 millimeters into the shaft. If I hit enter now, you'll see that the first bottle is exactly 55 millimeters spaced, and then the pitch starts changing after that. So we'll have one revolution of the shaft with the bottles touching, and then after that, the bottles will then start separating. Of course, you could make that two bottle revolution, uh, two shaft revolutions, and then you can see the pitch is maintained, or the bottles are still touching for the first two revolutions of the shaft, and then it starts changing, transitioning to the final value. It's totally up to you. I think good practice would be to have at least one or two revolutions at the entry pitch. The lead out value works in a similar way. How long do we want at the end of the shaft where the pitch is maintained at exactly 95 millimeters? You can see that here. In this case, the bottles won't be spaced 95 millimeters apart right at the end because we're not maintaining that value um, for long enough. Um, so this distance here, for instance, this distance will be less than 95 millimeters. So we need to at least normally give one revolution at the end there. Okay, hope that makes sense. Let's move on to the distance of the bottles from the shaft axis. So we're not, we're not doing variable distance. In this case, as I said, we're switching that off. We're just basically inputting one number to define how far these bottles are away from the shaft axis. At the moment, 80 millimeters, that is the distance from here to 
the opposite center of the bottle here. That's not the radial distance, it's the diametric distance. So let's uh, type in a different number here, 120. You can see we can put any number in that we want here. And let's maybe settle that to be something like, actually I think 80 was about right, wasn't it? Let's maybe make that 78. Okay, now we're about ready to choose how we want the app to actually create, to go about creating this geometry. And there are several settings that we can use for that. The first one is whether we want a single face for the helical cut on the shaft to be created or whether we want multiple faces. At the moment we're saying single face. If we look at the little eye symbol here, you can see the different results that we can get. Single face is normally preferred because it's gonna be easier for your cam system probably to traverse the geometry with just a single face. It can also look a bit nicer as well. Um, it's really only necessary to switch to a multiple face setting if you've got either quite an aggressive bottle profile with a very maybe a very sharp edge on it or if you're doing quite aggressive bottle rotation what we can find is that inventor can sometimes struggle to create the geometry in those situations as a single face because it's very complex and you can get some visual wrinkling of the face in which case switching to uh, switching this single face option off can actually make inventors job a bit easier because the problem is changed from one big problem to several smaller problems uh, and smaller faces in this case it's a pretty straightforward bottle shape we don't have anything particularly aggressive going on in terms of bottle rotation and movement and things like that so we're more than fine to leave it on a single face that would be the default to always start with a single face uh, shaft now these two sliders here can sometimes confuse new users for the app um, but it really should be quite straightforward these are just determining how much geometry you want to use to create that helical cut along the shaft. In the background, the app does actually use a loft feature to create that helical cut. And as you know, if you've used the loft function inside Inventor, you, you can define loft profiles to control the shape and loft rails to control how Inventor transitions between the shapes as it moves along. So. If you've got a very complex shape, you may want to introduce more loft profiles. Uh, if you've got a lot of fast transitioning, so fast rotation of the bottle and things, you may want some more loft rails, but by default, we would generally start out with low values for both of these. Your shaft will create much faster if you have lower values and the accuracy won't be adversely affected. This will be more than accurate enough for any manufacturing process you're likely to use. Okay, so we'll leave those sliders on a low setting. Anything else that we might want to do before we actually hit go and create this shaft? Well, we might want to run a preview build, which is a kind of blocky, rough build to see what it's going to look like. We might maybe want to run a simulation to see what the movement of the bottles is going to look like. Both are probably overkill in this case because it's such a simple shaft, but you can understand if you have complicated movement of the bottles you might not be sure whether they're going to clash with each other and things like that which is where these tools become more useful let's run them quickly just to demonstrate that they're there and that they can be used so let's run a quick preview shaft so i'll hit preview build here this is the preview build this is the full build and it'll start creating that preview build which basically just takes a load of boolean chunks out of the shaft and doesn't bother smoothing it off as it would do with the final build. Okay, so you can see that creates quickly. I'll say, yes, I do want to continue with another operation. And that preview build will temporarily just disappear. But then I could run a simulation of it. So this is the simulation button here. And hitting this will open up a new assembly file and automatically place the bottles in the assembly and give me the ability to move the bottles around as they actually would in the finished design. So you see I can move this slider around to check the movement of the bottles. I can hit the play button uh, to reverse and forward play this simulation. I'll just do that because what it actually does is it takes a few moments to construct the play video it's actually got 71 frames to produce in this case. So it starts out jerky, but then after it's produced the 71 frames, it's now nice and smooth. And we can see the, uh, the 
the preview of the play going on. If you run the preview, I need to hit the delete button on my keyboard to stop it. There's no stop button here. We have to hit delete on our keyboard and that will then stop the, the preview playing. I can right click here and change the speed of the preview. So if I, if I change that to say four times or five times even, and then hit play again, um, you see the, the play will go much faster. Um, and then of course I have to hit delete again afterwards. Uh, inside here I can rotate, I can pan around and move around uh, if I've got a 3D mouse or in fact without uh, and all the controls will still work if I'm doing that so if I hit play now I can see the, uh, the effect of that. Let's hit delete again. I can do other things in here like flip the bottles around uh, to put them both sides, I'm just using a space ball there to move the uh, move the view around okay um, another very useful tool in here is the ability to see the data so again possibly overkill on a simple design like this but if I just expand this view um, section which I can expand and collapse here and you see as uh, as we're moving this around let's just move forward a single step at a time you can see the data um, changing in there so when I say data, I just mean the positions of all the bottles. So what's the axial position of all these bottles? So if I, for instance, wanted to get a bottle exactly on zero, uh, let's see if we can get a bottle on zero here. See this one here. There we are. So I've now got bottle three is positioned exactly on zero. Let's just uh, get the view vertically positioned again and turn on the data again. There we are, so the first bottle is exactly on zero here, second one's 55 millimeters. The third one you see is more than 110 millimeters because of the lead-in value that we specified. Other useful things with this data here, the physical clearance between the bottles, you can see that. So I can see I've got exactly 40 millimeters physical gap between the bottles at the end of the shaft might be useful. The actual true pitch of the bottles is 95 at the end, like I asked, 55 at the start, like I asked. Okay, so there's some quite nice diagnostic tools here to make sure that the bottle movement is going to be exactly what you want. Of course, you can use normal inventor tools in here like right click measure and things like that inside this assembly. You can also cut sections through and so on and so forth. But uh, if I close this data section, inside this preview, this simulation rather, uh, I can save it and that will save this assembly as a snapshot in its current position. Or um, I can hit this return button um, and that will return to the builder which is what I want to do in this case because I haven't done a smooth build yet. Okay, so those were the two sort of main tools that you can use to check the build before you actually run it. That's the preview rough shaft, this one. That's run a simulation, giving you your sort of diagnostic tools, positions of bottles, movement of the bottle, that kind of thing. But uh, the main thing we're building up to really is just hitting this smooth shaft button to create the actual smooth shaft. So I'll hit that now and uh, the number crunching is going to commence uh, under the hood and uh, new in v5 of the app is the ability to actually um, cancel this generation as it's going we can hit this cancel button in fact i'm going to do that so that you can see we get operation cancelled and that will take us back into the builder form if we think that we've made a mistake and we can go and hit go again Okay, so with the number crunching happening again, I'll fast forward the video and we'll see the finished result in a second. Okay, I've got the finished result in uh, three and a half minutes. Uh, I'll say no, I don't want to continue with another operation because I want to just take a, a, a manual look at the geometry before I maybe run a simulation in a second. So uh, here's the finished result. You can see the geometry is very good, very smooth. We want to run an inspection. Let's do a zebra analysis to see the quality of the surfaces.
Okay, so if you're familiar with zebra analyses, this is a this is a good result, a good smooth result that we've got here. All good continuity with the surfaces. Um, so I will turn that off. Now if we were to open this part at any time in the future and need to make some changes to the scroll design, that's easy to do. We can just go and hit the generate button again, run a simulation, make some changes or just run the build from start again. Don't panic when the uh, preview pops up and the actual generated shaft disappears. That's just hiding it temporarily if I was to exit the form here. The, the finished result is still there. So let's hit generate again and maybe run a, run a simulation of this so that we can uh, look at a, a section view or something like that. So I'll hit simulate down here. Okay, and then we saw in the previous example how we can run a a play play a video of this simulation how we can flip the bottles so on and so forth i just wanted to run a section view here so that we can see the actual quality of the fit between the bottles and the shaft so i'll hit view half section view here and just click and drag So the fit between the bottle and the shaft should effectively be perfect. We're talking about tiny fractions of a millimeters tolerance. Even with the low values of the slider, the sliders that I used, remember I set the quantity of loft profiles to be quite low and also the loft rails to be low. But if we take a look at the fit here, you can see that the fit is effectively spot on there between the bottle and the shaft. Uh, and if I drag that up, you can see that the bottle kind of rolls around the shaft there. You see that fit is perfect. Again, so anticipating your question here, if you don't want a perfect fit between the bottle and the shaft, course in real world we need some clearance to prevent the bottles from jamming then you need to check out tutorial number seven which covers bottle oversize you can actually change the bottle oversize the bottle clearance as you move along the shaft as well in order to create a, a soft lead in or a soft lead out a soft entry or soft exit for the bottles so you can see there that the fit is effectively perfect between the bottle uh, all the bottles and the shaft. Uh, as I mentioned before, if we want to uh, save this assembly in its current position, then that is simple to do with this save button here. So if I hit this button, do we want to save the simulation files to disk? Yes, and all the bottles are grounded in their current position this file saved so now we've got an assembly file uh, where all the bottles are grounded I can't move them around the shaft is grounded and we can do whatever we like with this with this assembly file it's a normal inventor assembly file okay if you've made it this far thank you very much for sticking with this first tutorial please check out the others and thanks very much for watching